Hey everyone, Gabriel with Gabriel's Hobby Studio here. Today we'll be talking about cheap barrel options for your tabletop wargaming needs. Now these are solder couplings that you can get from any hardware store. I'm just going to go over some basic information about these as barrels and then get into the nitty gritty of making them fit into the world. I do have a lot of content here that we may be breaking up into two or three videos. We're going to first start out with some basic information about these, then get into painting and a couple of advanced options. Solder couplings come in different sizes. You've got the small half inch variety and then you've got the three quarters of an inch variety. They come in more sizes than this, but for my purposes, this will be what I'm referring to. If you're using these couplings for something on a different scale, just find out which size works best for your needs. Now, looking into the price of using these as barrels, for example, Games Workshop has barrels in their Immunitorium set. It's nine barrels and it comes with some other containers and loot crates or ammo crates. That kit is about $40 to $50 depending on where you're looking. I did try to find a way to break down the price of what the barrels are compared to these ones, but I couldn't find any good sources of information and I couldn't find any listings on eBay. Now. If you just take the total number of parts that were in that kit and then divide the price by that number, you'll get about $2 to $2.50. This is just a gross oversimplification of the price per part in the box. It's just no means to be accurate, but it gives us a jumping off point. These couplings, you can get the small ones for an average of 50 cents, and then the three quarter inch ones you can get for an average of 75 cents. Right here, I've included a couple of minis. Uh, we've got the pit fighter that I made in a previous video, and you can find a link in the top right of the screen here. I also have this Chaos Cultist for an upcoming video for Sense of Scale. I don't have that video out just yet, but when it does come out, I will put a card up in the top right of the screen here if you're watching this in the future. Using these minis for a sense of scale, the Beastman is entirely kit bashed, so that's a little harder to judge off of, which is why I included the Chaos Cultists. But you can see that these barrels are comparable to the size of what you would expect based on the size of the Chaos Cultist. And the reason I used the Chaos Cultist is because most 40k players know of this particular model or the set. It's the uh, five cultist $10 box. I think it's all easy fit, no glue. On some of these couplings, I've capped one end of them so that way I have some versatility in having either open or closed barrels throughout the table. Starting with the ones that I will be painting, uh, let's go through what I've done and how I got to that point. Inside of the barrel, I have a piece of foam to cap the one end. This doesn't need to be foam, but I have tons of EVA, so I just use that. You could use cardboard, chipboard, or any material for this if you wanted to do the same thing. If you're going to use a card material, it's just simply cut out a circle and glue it to the end or the inside of the barrel. If you want to use the foam like I've done, I can show you how I did this, and there are a few different ways of doing it depending on your comfort level with a hobby knife or scissors. To use the barrel, you can take a file and file the inside of one of the edges so that way you can plunge and twist a perfect fitting shape. Or you can take a knife and trim down the foam to a shape that fits inside and you can do the same thing with scissors. Each way has its merits, but I find that using the barrel results in a cleaner edge than the knife or the scissors. It just takes a little longer to do. So once you have the plug, just push it into the opposite end of where you want it to live. By doing this, you're helping to hide some of the raggedy edges and it will help round the corners of the foam where it meets the copper. At this point, you can glue it in if you want to, and depending on your foam choice and the fit, a friction fit may suffice. Before priming these, it is a good idea to run sandpaper over them, or you could use a rotary tool if you have one. This will just rough up the surface of the metal so that way the primer will stay better and have a less likely chance of flaking off. Now, if you wanted to do a little bit more before priming, you could incorporate bases or combine them together. I have a few here where I've based them on EVA or plastic card. I used the same method for twisting the foam caps and used that to embed the barrel into the EVA, but I didn't go all the way through it. 
Doing this resulted in a pretty firm friction fit that you can firm up with additional glue if you need to. For all these bases, I chamfered the edges roughly with my utility knife and added some hot glue in areas that I'll paint later like an ooze. For this other piece, I hot glued three barrels together and then with hot glue built up the surface of the card and with more hot glue, some flowing ooze out of those barrels. The first thing that I'm doing is getting a base coat put on each of these barrels. It's a lot easier with one end of the barrels open to be able to put it on the end of my finger instead of putting it on an individual stick or holder, although your mileage may vary depending on the tools at your disposal. I've decided against using one color or a limited palette of colors for the scheme for the barrels. I'm going to make as many different colors as I can and see where that gets me. I'm really liking the thought of having a diverse range on my table. Some of these colors are going to require multiple coats to get the opacity that I'm looking for. Yellow is notorious for streaking and not being opaque enough, and any color that uses yellow as one of its base colors, like green, is going to require more than one coat. Now, when it comes to doing the barrels that are on the foam or the card, a little more care is needed. If you don't glue these down prior to this step, then you could just pull them off and paint them separately, and put them back on. Some of these I ended up having to glue because I cut a little too far into the foam, and the glue for the ooze areas inadvertently glued the barrel to the foam. Luckily, however, the foam ones are rather easy because they're flexible, so I'm able to just bend the foam a little bit and open the gap between each barrel. That way I can maneuver my brush easier. For the barrels on bases, I'm not going to worry about getting perfect coverage as long as I get 90 to 95% coverage. I'm happy with this because the additional coats I'll put on later or any textures I may choose to use will help fill the last 5 to 10%. This translucent milky looking paint that I just put on that small palette is a glazing medium and a slow dry medium that I'm mixing together with some burnt sienna. I'm using this to tint the color of the foam itself to be a little more brown. The paint will be less opaque, but it will go on more transparent. By maintaining the consistency of the paint with the medium, I'm preventing any running or streaking that you would get if you were to water it down instead. When it comes to getting close to those oozy areas, I do slow down because I don't want that brown color on there at all. I want the gray undertone, but I don't want specks of brown, especially dotted around the perimeter. I'm mixing up more of that slow dry medium and glazing medium this time with some white and some of my green gold for the color of the ooze. I'm making a diluted kind of lime green color that I'll be using as the base coat for all of these areas. By adding the white, it does lighten down the color of the green gold, but it also helps to boost the opacity of the green gold. This mix is not as transparent as it would have been if only I used medium and green paint. The slow dry medium in all of these mixes is just to boost the life of the paint, essentially the amount of working time that I have before the paint begins to dry. There will be additional coats that will be placed over the top of the ooze areas, which will help to reduce any brush strokes and will help to change the overall color. With each subsequent layer, I'm going to be stippling on the color to hide the brush strokes, and I'm going to be purposefully making some areas thicker so it'll appear as if there's more substance in those areas and thinner as it gets further from the barrels. Here I've started using a green wash. I mixed this with water, medium, and some green and brown inks. I'm going to be applying this in several coats over the areas of the ooze to darken down the tone of that color. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm moving on to sponging and stippling on some brown and black colors on the barrels. My goal with this is to impart a faux texture over the barrels and break up the monotonous color on each of their surfaces. After this, I apply a black wash to the tops of the barrels to bring out the texture in the foam. With those tops now dry, I apply a mix of black and brown washes over the barrels to darken down the color and bring all of the colors into alignment with one another. The last color that I'm using is, again, a mix of slow dry medium, and this time I'm adding a little bit of neon green. This is just a dollar craft paint. But by mixing it with my artist medium, I can bring it more in line with the consistency of my other paints. This way, it won't clog up details and won't be as thick or gloopy when I apply it to the train. 
At first, this will just be a thin glaze to bring out more vibrant greens in certain areas. Then I'll move on to stippling and brushing over certain areas to simulate where it would be glowing or reflecting more light. If you liked this video, please stay tuned to my next release. That one will be covering these barrels again, but it's a science experiment twist. I would like to hear from all of you in the comments below. Can you guess what I'll be doing in the next video? If you enjoyed this content and you want to see more, please like the video, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you can be notified when I post new content. As always, have fun, be creative, and happy hobbying.